but it was nothing. Good afternoon, Portland. Good afternoon, American government and police department. Today is July 31st. That means it's the last day of the month. Can't believe we just got through another July. Independence Day, there was no fireworks. I think we could have had fireworks, but there was no fireworks, not at least when I was there, celebrating independence. 1776, I believe, to 2021. That's a long time for a nation to declare itself independent of another nation. Well, what brings me here today is a situation that I just walked out of at FedEx down the street. I was trying to complete this work here, the manuscript, and also the video. I was trying to complete the bibliography that goes with the 1800 page book. I had to reduce it from 2500 to 1800. The Lord doesn't want it any bigger than that. But while I was in there for about five minutes, the manager walked up and she was just checking me out to see what I was doing. And um, really there was no conversation between her and I. But you could feel the tension there. She walked away and underneath her breath, I could hear her talking me down. Why was she talking down to me? Because of who she represents. Not because there's an altercation between me and the woman, the manager itself, but the woman that she represents from New York State. There seems to be a conglomeration of representatives here in Portland. It's like the entire state of New York, everybody that I knew there who had an issue with me because I didn't submit to them as a youth, as an elementary school student and as a high school student and first year college student, people from RKO, people from the Nanuet group home, people from some of the various jobs that I've had, Red Lobster being one of them, that woman specifically was representing a former worker out of New York, or if not New York, California. I'm not sure which of the two states that I met this woman. I think it might have been California. I don't remember. But I know that this woman specifically, I know the voice, but I, I can barely remember the face. But I do know the voice. When I look at this woman, what do I see? I see the woman from the Pitock Mansion. I see the manager of the West Shore Apartment. Heck, I see my own, no, I can't say I see my own mother, but there's a slight resemblance there. I keep running into people that resembles people that I used to know in other states and other cities. And when they catch up to me here in Portland, it's a butt whooping. It's a get out. You can't be here. They hiss at you. You need to leave. You can't be in this storage. This is the seminary talking. You need to leave. You can't be in this gym. You need to leave. You can't be in this apartment complex. You need to go. You can't participate and be a part of this church. You need to leave. How do you combat that? What's the proper response? Here you are dealing with a whole new group of people, fresh new people, but when they come out as a community, they're the exact people that you left behind in New York State. Or they're the exact people that you left behind in California, in another life. How am I supposed to combat these new people? I'm not looking forward to dealing with old New York situations, old California situations. I'm trying to get on with my life. I can't get on with my life. They even had the gall to put the the voice of Gabriel Franklin, a former guardian, whom I was removed from in 85, I became a ward of the court. They have the gall to put her 
on an intercom. So wherever I go, I can hear her voice. Whatever she's saying on the intercom. On top of that, and she's from New York. When I came into the country, that was the woman that opened the door for me to stay with her. But I lost their family in 85. When I moved out to Los Angeles, it was, Cal it was uh, John MacArthur's church where I thought I made the right decision in joining the church instead of moving forward into the acting industry. I left the acting industry so that I would have to deal with some of the sins that are in there. I decided to go in the biblical direction instead. I decided to follow in the footsteps of these apostles and prophets and men of God. I was a professing Christian. I did my communion and confirmation in the Catholic Church, and now I was moving forward to go in this direction. When they asked me to leave in 99, I had no idea all of these people were going to catch up to me, as if I had committed a crime. What was the crime that I had committed? I didn't submit. African non-submission and subordination. And now here it is, 2021, I can't even walk into a FedEx and complete a bibliography. Now, I've got about six of these boxes, right? The manuscript will fill up about six of these boxes. Maybe less, or four maybe, right? Maybe four, four of these small boxes, right? But in any case, the point being that the manager shouldn't have had to come out on behalf of this woman. This, this manager shouldn't have had to come out against me as if I was a criminal doing something evil on the property. And it's not just this property, it's all the properties in Portland. All the properties in Seattle. You need to leave, you need to go. Where am I supposed to leave to? Where am I supposed to go to? This is the state that I live in now. I'm trying to move on with my life. And you people from New York and California have made sure that all the doors are closed. So now in the name of the community, I'm supposed to do what? What am I supposed to change, New York? What am I supposed to change, California? What, what am I supposed to change? You're, I'm in front of the, your police department. If you have something against me, why don't you come out and, 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 and file a report with the police officers and have me arrested. Why are you persecuting me as a state, as a community? I'm not from the LGBTQ community, I'm from Haiti. I'm a Haitian. I make that very public. I want the people to know that that's probably one of the main reasons why I've been rejected by New York and California as a youth and as a man going into the seminary because of my Haitian heritage. Last time I was here, I read to you, right? Switching gear here for a minute. Last time I was here, I read to you the Ten Commandments. Remember the Ten Commandments out of Exodus? Exodus chapter 19 or Exodus chapter 20 that outlines four relationships. Your relationship with God, your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your neighbor and your relationship with your parents. I read to you Exodus and I, and I made a big sign that says thou shalt not kill and the name of it that was on the sign was Jovenel Moise, right? The Haitian president that had been assassinated. For what purpose or reason, I don't know. I've heard a lot of different things, but I know that he was killed on July 7th, right? This month. On, on July 2nd, I was hit in my tent, and on July 7th, he was killed by supposedly Colombians. I heard that it was the United States that went to the Colombians, and based on whatever conversation they had, it was the Colombians who decided to hit him. And not just him, but there's also another. Myself and Gabriel Franklin, we come as a package. In other words, this month here is supposed to be Jovenel, Kevin Duclaron, and um, Gabriel Franklin, right? These people want me dead. Now, what did I do in New York State that deserves death? What did I do in California that deserves death? Is my race 
the reason why I need to die? Is my nationality the reason why I need to die? Why is it that these people are constantly after my life? Why is it that these people are constantly wanting me cut down and removed out of this community, out of this society, out of this country, out of this life? What is it that I did to Gabriel Franklin? Or is Gabriel Franklin no different than this woman who is at the FedEx, but this one is a representative. Is Gabriel Franklin a representative also, but on the Haitian side? What I was told by the community was that she was representing the Queen of Wales. I was in England. I went to England at least twice through London Heathrow. And I'll tell you the truth, I, I never had an altercation with, with, with English government, with the British government over there. So what exactly is the problem with Gabriel Franklin? Why am I still every single day being given shots in the tents and being left directed, pierced in my foot, pierced in my knees? I feel like I'm repeating the life of John MacArthur and Gabriel Franklin. Why am I feeling like I'm repeating their lives, their testimonies? This doesn't make any sense. Why would the queen be after me? For what purpose or reason? Why would John MacArthur, after 20 years, still be after me? The four-page letter that was written was written so I would be dismissed. Now I'm in another state. Why is it that I can't find an apartment and keep the apartment for however long I need? Why do I have a conglomeration of people in the background trying to manipulate my entire life? How does this work with the gospel and the Ten Commandments? Well, if you remember the Ten Commandments, it was written after Moses and his people had left Goshen for 430 years of slavery. God is not in favor of slavery. So the Ten Commandments is, is an outline of this is the kind of relationship that I want you to have with your neighbor. This is the kind of relationship that I want you to have with your spouse. This is the kind of relationship that I want you to have with what? With your parents and then with me, God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one. What was the problem in Egypt? Israel had a group of people, a nation of people, assuming the position of God over their lives, which is what the British settlers did here in the United States when they came and they murdered the Native Americans and they brought a bunch of slaves with them. They assumed the position of God. Anytime one nation rules over another nation, it is because they are assuming the position of the Almighty. In other words, we control who you are, what you do, where you go, what level you live on, what you acquire. We control what you eat, what's on your plate. We control where your children go to school, what kind of education they get. We control who you marry, how many children you have. It's a control thing. Right? You don't rise. You're not the lead. Why am I not the lead? You're not European. You're not, you're not supposed to be here. Why aren't you on your island? It's a constant conflict between nations. I think that's why Jesus said it in the New Testament. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. European children are growing up in this country not knowing that they, their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents slaughtered, murdered, genocide, spilled the blood of another nation that was here, and that's how they got the country. And then they now have an attitude and a chip on their shoulders that we need to submit to them. But the Word of God has something to say. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Word of God has something to say. Honor your father and mother. The Word of God has something to say. You shall not murder, whether it be kings, presidents. You shall not steal, whether it be countries, manuscripts, not even two quarters. The Word of God has something to say. You shall not commit adultery. That means don't come to a child 
or to another man in the middle of the night while they're incapacitated and take sex from their body or while they're wide awake, wide awake, and here you are consenting with them when you have a ring on your finger. It's right here. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. I don't understand this. Why all this altercation? It's all, you know, under your breath. Very subtle. It's not that to your face, you know, I'm gonna kick your butt. It's very subtle. In the color of the shirt you wear, pink, green, the, the blue, the sky blue, very subtle. In other words, you're supposed to read into it. Now I've been put in a situation, I've got to read my life into all of this stuff that they're doing. How does the LGBTQ community work together with the Word of God? It doesn't. If the lesbians, gays, bisexual, transgenders, queers, and hermaphrodites of the world would bother to read the Word of God, they would understand that God sees all of that as an abomination. As an abomination. Yes, God is the God of grace, but what does the scripture say? Your eyes are too pure to look upon sin. That's why we preach the gospel of repentance. Repent and believe. We don't preach the gospel of repentance and believing so that you can continue to live in sin. If somebody hands me a $20, I shouldn't have to go to a store to perform sexual immorality on anybody, you know, crawling all over the floor like two snakes in order for me to redeem the $20. You know what the Word of God says that we preachers and we pastors and we elders, those who do the work of the ministry? It's not the responsibility of the unbelieving community. It's not, it's not the responsibility of the Ku Klux Klan. It's not, it's not the responsibility of the devil and his children to pay us for the work that we do. It is the responsibility of God's holy church. That's why the word of God says, what does it say in Timothy? In 1 Timothy 5, it says, let me find it here real quick. In 1 Timothy 5, the scripture says, in verses 17 through 18, the elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Am I working right now, or am I bad-mouthing the government? Is this what Jesus, or this is what the apostles are talking about? When we open up the scriptures and we read to you from the word of God, whether it be the Ten Commandments or one of Paul's apostolic letters or the gospels that outlines the life of Christ, the word of God says what? How do we get paid? It's from the church. But what happens when the church says, we're not gonna pay you because you're a black man. We're not gonna pay you, we're gonna give you sex instead. We're, gonna, we're not gonna pay you, but if you wanna be paid, we'll give you that. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says nothing about that, that being anal sex, that being homosexuality, that being fornication, that being adultery, that being sexual immorality while you're asleep, that being what, an extra piece of chicken? No. The scripture says the worker is worthy of his wages. Aren't you working for the police department for wages? Isn't there a sign behind this board here that talks about your wages, 40000 to 60000 Are you putting your life on the line for a cock? Are you putting your life on the line for an ass? Are you putting your life on the line so you could jerk somebody off at the mall in the basement? Are you putting your life on the line so you can go meet some sissy boy, some sissy old man in some uh, uh, a closet booth at 100 and whatever street? What are you putting your life on the line for? For the wages, so you can live, so you can buy what you need, so you can put a roof over your head. Wages, what do we do with the wages? We pay our bills, we pay for our tuitions. You buy what you need. Jesus told Peter, we need to pay taxes. Render to Caesar what is Caesar, render to God what is God. So he tells Peter, go into the sea, 
throw in your, uh, your hook, catch a fish, the first fish that you get, open its mouth and take out a coin. What is that? That's the fishing industry. You can get money by doing what? Selling fish. Jesus says to Peter again, what? Go and make, um, what did he say? I will make you fishers of men. Now, if you can make an income, okay, as fishers of men, what do you think you can do as fishers? If you can make an income as a fisherman, what do you think you can do as a fishers of men? The church provides for its own. It's the responsibility of the body of Christ to take care of its own, as it was in Israel. In Israel, the priesthood, right, the Levites, they were taken care of by the other 11 tribes. It is the responsibility of the church to take care of its what? Of its workers. But when you have an LGBTQ community telling you, you're not the lead, you're not the, you're, in other words, you're not the worker, right? Do the work and then we'll take it and we'll have somebody from our race repeat everything you said and then we'll pay them the money, but you will give your cock. Where is it written that we come to the LGBTQ community for anything? We don't. So it freaks me out when you send a stranger, whether it be a male or a female, to hand me a 20 in what context? If it's not in this context here, where the word of God is being preached, sin is being confronted, and you're being called to repent, in what contact, context do we receive this kind of gratuity from the people of God? When you, the unbeliever, comes with money in hand and you hand it to us, what is it that you want? You want sex from the community. You want me to yield to all of that. Well, this is what I'm working with here, these sets of instructions. And according to these sets of instructions, you and I are in two different places and in two different worlds. Jesus says, come out from among them and be separate. So when you, the unbeliever, approaches me about slavery, you're, 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 you're basically extending your hand and saying, come back to this relationship. You know, the old relationship where blacks are led by whites based on their skin, hair, and eyes? where blacks were subordinates, every time you offer me your, your hand and you're offering me slavery, you're offering me what? Your uh, condemnation. You're telling me to leave my relationship with God by faith and to come back with you and to be your subordinate, to be your slave, to be your property. God does not want us to do that. That's why he says, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Where is that? In Corinthians, right? In the book of Corinthians. I think it's 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, right? Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols. If we're the temple of God because the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we have nothing to do with you in the world, right? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the Lord Almighty. You unbelieving Americans don't think that applies to you. It applies to you. You know, in Genesis, two things happened. There was a division. One group followed the voice of the devil and one group followed the voice of the Lord. Do you know that that is still what it is today? One group follows the voice of the devil and one group follows the voice of the Lord. Those who go to heaven follows the voice of the, uh, of the Lord, and those who go down to hell follows the voice of the devil. Whose voice are you following? Whose voice are you listening to? Who's talking to you in your head and in your heart? Who's shaping you for eternity? The one shaping you for eternity. Does he or she represent the kingdom of God? Or does he or she represent the kingdom of the devil? 
It's so plain and simple in the scriptures. But when you're standing there, or when you're sitting there, and you're listening to these people, or you're dealing with the issues of life, you forget that there is two doors, and two directions, and two different types of leaders. One that will lead you to eternal damnation, and one that will lead you to eternal life. Where are you going, American? Are you going to eternal life, or are you going to eternal damnation? Are you going north to God, or are you going south to hell? Where the devil and the false prophets and the beast will be. Which direction are you going? North or south? Are you going to the flames? Or are you going to the, the, the peace and tranquility? The house of forgiveness. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. The house of forgiveness. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Cast them into the eternal flame or the house of pain. Every single day, these people are piercing my body. Why? Why are you torturing my flesh? Why are you torturing my flesh? Why are you sticking your needles in my feet, in my wrists, in my shoulders, in my knees? Why are you constantly leaving my genital erected? Haven't you eaten enough of my flesh? What doors are you going to allow for God to open and for me to continue this journey?